Alrighty, yo, what is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. DDG94 here, back with another reaction video. Today, we're going to react to Prim's Hood Cinema. We're going to react to Boys in the Hood. We're going to see is we're going to get this out the way. So, let's go on ahead and do this. Definitely needed this, this, this disclaimer in the front. Boys in the Hood is a 1991 hood drama starring some boys, they in the hood. It's Ice Cube, Cuba Gooding Jr., and Morris Chess Cube, and also Morpheus. <laughs> it's written and directed by the legendary John Singleton, and even picked up a couple Oscar nominations in his day. It's about Trey Styles, played by Cuba Gooding Jr. Trey is smart, but fucking up in school or something, so his mom sends him to live with his dad. His dad is Morpheus, and he's kind of woke or whatever, so he teaches Trey about the hood, there's more to it, though, I guess. I'll take you through it. Let's watch it and make fun of it and not absorb the message. It starts off with Trey as a kid, and he and a group of friends are walking to school through the dirty-ass streets of Inglewood. One of the kids stops them and asks them if they want to see something. Y'all want to see something? They stop by an old crime scene, oh and it's sad. Look at the hood. It's so sad. Also, these kids are terrible actors. But that kind of comes with the territory if you're gonna get real authentic kids from the hood, which it seems like that's what they did. Still, there's better kids out there. I'll get my brother and shoot you in the face! They go to school and Trey keeps interrupting the class with his whack-ass elementary school jokes. Pilgrims! That's right, the pilgrims, very good. The penguins! <laughs> Would you like to come up and teach the class? Ooh. Everybody in the from Africa. I'm from Africa, you from Africa, you African booty scratcher. <laughs> <laughs> Trey's mom is tired of Trey and his rat tail and sends them both to live with his dad, Furious Styles. Yeah, okay, niggas really call you Furious. That's like a bullshit, overly cool cartoon nickname a nigga get to himself. I hate niggas that do that. They be like, niggas round away call me Shadow. Like, no the fuck they don't. Nobody call you that shit. He gets to his dad's place and he goes to hang out with the kids in the neighborhood. You don't want to collect all those comics. Why well, this fool got more comics than a motherfucker? Furious makes Trey rake all the leaves in the yard and starts piling the chores up on this nigga immediately. I gotta lay down the rules of the house. Mm, you got to. Safe. Gotta make a man out of him. Gotta turn that boy into a man. When he get out there on his own, he gotta know how to take care of himself. Okay, nigga, you shit dirty as fuck. Why are you trying to play responsible? Giving out chores and shit? Because he's supposed to, bro. He didn't get them options growing up as a kid. He didn't get them he didn't get them options growing up as a kid, so he had to be so he's just trying to teach it into his kids, man. That, bro, the purpose of being a parent is to is to groom your child to be better than you. That's the main purpose of having a child, bro. If you're going to have a child, you're going to have to groom them to be better than you. You got to see how you live and see your wrongs and your flaws and try to perfect them through your child. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's, a, it's a wisdom thing. Not many people have it. If that's what it is. It's the only explanation I have, though. Why else have such a blatant contradiction if it's not on purpose? I don't have to do nothing around here. Later that night, somebody tries to break in. Furious shoots at the guy, but he gets away. He and Trey wait outside for the police to come, and they take a really long time. And it's sad. Look at the hood. It's sad. Honestly, that's all this movie really is. I was waiting for like a plot to kick in or something the whole time, but it's just kind of, look how sad the hood is. That's fine and all, though. That actually was the point of the movie back in the day. To sort of bring awareness to the shittiness of the hood and to do it in sort of a real, unapologetic way. That kind of shit was less talked about back then, so the movie is definitely effective. But I do kind of wish there was some more hood adventure fun shit going on. I mean, I already know how shitty the hood is, nigga. But you get it. We then cut over to Doughboy and Ricky's house where their mom is giving them some words of encouragement before they leave the house. You don't do shit and you never got a mouth to shit. All the kids are hanging out and the one kid asks if they want to go check out a dead body and they say yeah and they go look and it's sad. The hood is sad. Ricky also brings his football and is just having the fucking time of his life with that shit. Then some older niggas roll up on him and ask to hold it. Yo, throw the ball, little man. I ain't gonna take it. Thanks, guys. Ah! <laughs> really miss my nigga! Ah! Really miss my nigga! What people you can sing it to? 
Trey grows up. Dope Boy goes to jail. I mean, he grows up also, but just in jail. Ricky has a baby. He grows up too. Ricky grows up, I mean. Not the baby. What's up, Joe? Working on that box more? Yeah, get discounted clothes and shit. You like? You like? Nah, nigga. You look like a San Andreas NPC. You're making a big mistake, ghetto boy. Matter of fact, I could never really buy this nigga Cuba Gooding Jr. as a hood nigga. Something about this nigga face and the way he moves. He always looks like a fucking point dexter to me or something. It kind of works in this role, though, I guess. His character's not supposed to be a super hardened hood nigga. He's just a regular guy, more or less. Right. He's maybe kind of woke also, like a Furious Styles Jr. type nigga. It's I supposed to be going for a little bit. Not really. I didn't do nothing. Also, this nigga's supposed to be in high school, right? Yeah, right. This nigga look like he's 31 years old. Fact. He sucks to let you trade about sex and ask if he's still a virgin. It was a Sunday, right? Man, there was this one girl. Is this your ride? I want to try it. She was so mid, bro. I ain't even going to lie to you. Like, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm pretty sure, you know... She redo her hair, she probably look a little different, but she was so mid, bro. I'm like, nah, Chief, y'all can have that one. I ain't saying she ugly. I, I, she she fuckable. Don't get me wrong, she fuckable, but to me, she was just mid, bro. Like she was like a fuck. She was like a fuck that you just hang on to for a couple of months and then dip on. For real. I'm only joking. She's not that bad. This nigga lying anyway. This bitch imaginary. The whole story is made up. I left the pops yesterday. You were telling me I wasn't no virgin. Fuck out. Go that company in a minute. Bro, how old are these niggas supposed to be? This nigga big as shit talking about I can't have no company. Nigga, if you don't get these fucking grown ass buff ass niggas out of here. Ricky's meeting with a recruiter for whatever school and the nigga has to come to the house and he's all in a suit and glasses and shit and he's out of place. It's pretty funny. I'm from USC. Yo, you think you can hook me up with a scholarship? Oh, man. Move, come. Move. I'm gonna blame this one on the mom. She should have made these dirty ass niggas go home. Also, this pacified nigga look like Ben Staples. It's time to take the SATs, and Ricky's nervous about it. He needs at least a 700 in order to get a scholarship. At this time, if you do not have a number two pencil with you, please raise your hand and keep it up. We'll pass that pencil out to you. During the time allotted. He ain't got a pencil? Why the fuck don't this nigga have school supplies? Isn't his mom so proud of him? This is an important event. Pencil's like a dollar, bro. Shame on these pants, man. Get your kids out the hood. Nigga, jersey all wrinkled and shit. Come on, man. The mom don't care that much. She ain't even really do shit for him to get this far. This nigga was just always good at football. They take the test, and then Ricky and Trey go see Furious at his business. It's called Furious Financial Services. Whatever the fuck that means. That's a hilarious name for a financial service place. Like, I imagine him just angrily going through your paperwork and throwing calculators and shit. You <laughs> should be all balled up when he give it back to me. He starts preaching at these niggas some more and asks them to take a ride out to Compton. And that's not their hood, so these niggas are scared. Hey, man, I don't know about all this period. I'm just walking around a motherfucking Compton. It's the 90s. Can't afford to be afraid of wrong people anymore now. I'm talking about the message, what it stands for. <laughs> Furious makes a speech about a billboard and gentrification and everybody likes it. I mean, I'm guessing they liked it. Nobody came and beat his ass like it looked like they were about to. Tricky. <laughs> Nigga, I try to say Trey and Ricky. I say Trey. <laughs> Tricky ride up to Crenshaw where all the niggas are hanging out and it's like a car show or some shit. Everybody just parks the car and walks around and it's, shit. It's a function. That's really what it is, my guy. It's a function, bro. It's not a it's not a car show. It's a function, bro. That's what they call it out there, bro. They call it a function, my guy. Get it correct. But nah, I don't know if that's a good idea. It looks fun, but that's too many niggas. Y'all asking for it. So some nigga bumps Ricky and tries to start trouble. 
Ice Cube flashes his pistol and the guys. We got a problem. We got a problem, nigga. Automatic and shoot it in the air and scare everybody away. Just to be assholes. These niggas savages. Tricky get pulled over and basically the cops bitch him and threaten to kill him and shit. It's sad, sad hood movie. Trey goes to see his girl after the encounter and breaks down. And I'm not gonna make fun of this scene. It's actually a pretty powerful scene. It encapsulates that hood rage so perfectly. There's so many different factors that get in your way or hold you back in the hood that people from traditional homes just really don't quite understand. And that's where this movie is important. Like that rage and frustration is inside of everybody stuck in the hood. It's what turns kids into doughboys, you know? Or yep. doughboys moms where you just don't give a fuck and you get complacent. Anyway, it's fine. Trey's girl finally let him be. He's not sad anymore. So no matter what career you choose, You'll really be ready to take off. Man, just, just fuck all that shit, right? I'm going to the fucking army. Man, they don't tell you is that you don't belong to you no more. Facts. Man, my daddy told me a black man has got no business, no place in a white man's army. Yeah, yeah, Facts. Facts. We ain't got no place in the army. That ain't our battle. We ain't start that war. That's why I say, man, when they start World War Three, I already got my exit plan. Planned out perfectly. I ain't gonna say it right now because I feel like they'll try to uh, they'll try to make a new law up to make sure that you do go in there and do that shit. But not, you know, fuck it. I'm gonna say it anyway. Listen, if they start World War Three and you get drafted, just be insubordinate as fuck, and then hopefully they honorably just, hopefully they discharge you and send you back home because. Technically, they can't send you to jail because you did go, you 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 went there to fulfill the obligations that was that was there. Only difference is you just didn't meet the fucking requirements. You were insubordinate. You was an asshole the entire time. Just 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 do whatever you can to get the fuck out of there, bro. Like I'm telling you, bro. If they ever do a draft and your name gets selected, remember this advice. Cause trust me. I'm not going into the army. I'm not finna kill nobody just because. I don't give a fuck about this country because this country don't give a fuck about me. So the way I see it is like this. Do what you gotta do to get the fuck out. Don't fall for the matrix. Just do what you gotta do to get the fuck out. To get yourself back home. To get back to your normal life. That's all you gotta do, my, my people. Yeah, this nigga Furious Styles be dropping knowledge. He may be a dirty ass bathroom ass. And I was stinking, but I He's doing way more for his kid than most parents, especially Doughboy and Ricky's mom. That bitch hella ratchet. She's not even on drugs or nothing. She's just really apathetic to the whole situation. Anyway, Ricky and Trey go to the store and run into the niggas from the car show. Ice Cube and the gang see the car speeding down the street and they spring into action. <laughs> this nigga. This nigga got the Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy music. Mercury! Then you got the Minecraft. Come on, bro. Damn, okay. That was kind of horrible. Was that the best take they had? That was really unconvincing. Mama! Ricky dies in a sad, fucking sad hood movie. Doughboy, Chris, Trey, and Pacifier nigga all go to retaliate, but Trey gets out at the last second. Then he goes home, and him and Furious have a moment. Furious kind of understands where he's coming from, maybe. Ah, whatever. Why these niggas look the same age? Doughboy and the gang end up riding around for a hot-ass minute, but they finally get the guys. Popped all the ass. Next morning, Doughboy comes over and talks to Trey. He tells him he understands why he got out the car. Y'all get him? Shit just goes on and on, you know. Next thing you know, somebody might try to smoke me. Somebody does smoke him next, and that's the end of the movie. Oh, and Trey goes to college, I guess. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I'm sure you already heard, but the man, the legend, John Singleton, suffered from a stroke on April 17th and unfortunately never recovered. 
He is now dead. It's a sad day in history, man. Man was way too young, way yeah. too talented. Yeah, we lost one a good one, though. Directors, man. His movies were beautiful. Still yeah. to this day, he has the most We lost a good one, man. We lost a good find. one right there. He doesn't sugarcoat it. He doesn't glamorize that shit like some do. His art has changed so many of our lives, man. And I got nothing but love, man. Nothing but respect. Facts. I was actually in the middle of this review when it all happened. I wasn't reviewing it because he died or anything. It's a fucked up coincidence. But I'm glad I chose this one. We'll be back with more John Singleton movies, man. Definitely. Definitely doing Baby Boy. That's my favorite, obviously. You see the intro. You see the icon. Yeah, you believe me. We out here, man. Go check out all John's work. Man is a genius. Really sad day. But that's all I got for you, man. I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, later. Real talk, though, man. R.I.P. to John Singleton, man. We got to definitely get some more out of that, man. Man, that's that's the homie, man. That's that's the legend, man. He the one who started Snowfall. Y'all got to think about it. Before he passed away, he started Snowfall. Look what Snowfall became. Come on, man. I'm still mad at that ending, though. That ending pissed me off, bro. They do Franklin like that. But anyways, though, that's just going to about end it off for right now. I will see you all the next video. Till then. Peace out.